So the first way that we're going to end up starting to combat loneliness is by the intentional practice of solitude. So solitude, putting it in relationship to loneliness, often seems very counterintuitive. And that's mostly because when we think of solitude, it is being alone. However, in solitude, we're reversing the effects of a feeling of isolation and instead building a personal foundation for outward connection. So just by definition, you know, we say solitude is the state or situation of being alone. Um, at least that's what the internet basically says. However, by speaking to solitude as the intentional and disciplined practice. Um, so I'm just going to be upfront in saying that a lot of my thoughts on solitude have uh, been influenced by this book, uh, The Celebration of Discipline. Uh, it's where I first kind of heard about it. Um, and so I'm going to quote a portion of this. It's actually quoting um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer um, in his work, uh, Life Together. Let him who cannot be alone beware of community. Let him who is not in community beware of being alone. Each by itself has profound pitfalls and perils. One who wants to fellowship without solitude plunges into the void of words and feelings, and one who seeks solitude without fellowship perishes in the abyss of vanity, self-infatuation, and despair. The reason I like that quote so much is because it really highlights this relationship that is between solitude and connection. They are deeply intertwined, even though we often don't realize it. As quoted, each one left to itself has severe pitfalls, severe detractions from life, severe brokenness. But when we can figure out that personal balance, it's really what makes each side healthy and beneficial. Oftentimes, especially as a single individual, you spend time alone without other people around. That can often lead to this sense of loneliness, and more specifically, I would say just isolation. So I distinctly place isolation in terms of something that's imposed upon you. So it feels like I'm alone because either other people aren't around me or I can't get to them, or there's some sort of barrier to outside relationship and connection. However, solitude is personally sought. You go and do it actively, intentionally, and for your own benefit and for your own pleasure. Another thing to remember is that solitude and true silence usually go hand in hand. And as you're practicing this discipline, especially initially, um, I highly advise that. So often our lives are just full of noise, and that noise is often full um, of this fear of missing out, fears of not having the connections with others, outside influences that are telling us how we should be, how we should feel, um, how we should relate with others, and so often these sources aren't speaking truth. They're speaking falsehood. They're giving um, this very pretty picture of what our lives are, should be like that just don't match with reality. Because we have this constant input of these messages, so often we don't actually consider our own personal priorities, our own values, our own personal condition as it is and as it is truly and honestly. That's why solitude is important to center ourselves, to recalibrate our priorities. And because of this, it allows real meaningful connections instead connections that are solely based on trying to fulfill a need of ours to have a relationship with others. So how do you do this practically? Solitude can be practiced anywhere at any time. It mostly depends on your particular uh, skill and discipline. But especially when you're starting out, seek a quiet, natural, comfortable place that's away from other humans. Also with this, Try to remove as many distractions as possible. Leave your phone behind, leave the music behind, whether it's a game, newspaper, book, whatever, just, just remove distractions for a set 
period. This is a time to meditate, it's a time to pray, and it's a time to just listen. It's a time to take inventory of what you're actually feeling, what your actual, just even physical condition is. Just listen and rest. Be calm. Start small, whether that's just 15 to 20 minute um, you know, sessions where you're just trying to break away from the noise. They just expand it over time. Um, utilize the small moments throughout the day. Um, so often we just get so caught up with our cell phones or other devices where instead of taking the few moments of silence and calm as you're waiting in line at the grocery store or as you're driving from one place to another, um, so often we just fill this with outside noise and distraction. Instead, just pull away and possibly just use that time for that recentering, for that self evaluation. Also, as you're practicing solitude and as you get, I guess, kind of better at it, recenter and then also do things that you enjoy. Some people describe this as kind of like dating yourself, but find things that you enjoy just doing by yourself that, regardless of outside influence, you like to do. Um, and just practice those things, enjoy it, whether it's a cup of coffee, the new cup of beer, going to this type of event, listening to this particular music. Do things that make you happy and that you find to be restorative. So our overall goals as we approach solitude is to really learn to take control of your mental state. Um, as we learn to practice this as a discipline, it will be breaking down the feelings of isolation and loneliness to make it so it's not being imposed upon you or you're feeling trapped but instead becoming this place that you joyfully seek out yourself it's going to allow you to evaluate your relationships and your activities to figure out what do you actually like what is actually good for you what is benefiting your life and what is just sucking energy and life away from you it's a way to build self-awareness to be able to love yourself and truly understand your being. It's also a time just to rest and relax so you have that relational energy that you can then expand and pour into others. Solitude is one of my favorite things. Um, it's not something that I intentionally practice as much as I used to, but I know I've found great benefit of just having that time of recentering, of quiet, of spending time around, you know, trees and green things, or even just enjoying quiet times. And it is definitely hard when you first start because we're just so used to having all of the noise and distraction around us. So I encourage you to try this and start small, build up as you go, and just learn the joys of being by yourself in a beneficial way. So often we want internal motivation to then change how we feel. Um, and then once we feel a particular way, then we'll start an activity. In all reality, it usually works the other way around. So even if you don't feel like being intentionally alone and would much rather just be, work on being around other people first, really try to practice this intentionally, just as a workout, even though you don't feel like running a couple miles today, just do it. As you practice this activity, it will change your attitude, it will change your feelings, and pretty soon, maybe you'll enjoy solitude as much as I do. Mm -hmm.